We continue to develop ideas that allow us to pass from affine varieties to ring theory and back. First, let's recall a big result from last time. We have a ring R, which is a C algebra, finitely generated, and has no non-zero nil potents. Then, R is the coordinate ring for some affine variety V. So this is a nice result to invoke, but we want to make sure we at least have some feel for what's going on underneath. Now, where does this come from? Well, main ideas. Okay, so since this is finitely generated, we'll pick a small set of generators, say G1 through GK. I'll consider polynomials over the complex numbers and K variables. And I'll have a map into R just given by taking these polynomials, evaluate at G1 through GK. Okay, so this is going to be a surjective map and a C-algebra homomorphism. Now, because it's surjective, okay, if the kernel is equal to I, then we have that our ring is just isomorphic to the polynomial ring modded out by I. Because we have no null potents, okay, what's that mean? Well, our polynomial ring is Noetherian, so I is finitely generated, but because there are no null potents, I is equal to its radical, which is the same as saying that none of these elements here are powers of another element. Okay, and then we have to clean up some, but that's the general idea. Now, how does one use this in practice? It's very abstractly stated. So when I want to just pull okay, geometric data off of a ring, okay, what we'll use is what we call spec of R. So spec, okay, as a set, the points are just going to be all the maximal ideals in R. Notation, okay, usually spec is reserved for prime ideals. For maximal ideals, we use spec M, but to be consistent with our sources, we're just going to use spec, okay, Cox, Little, and Shea. Now, from the null Stellenzatz, okay, to get a handle on these maximal ideals as points, here's the process. If we have V, an affine variety over the complex numbers, okay, I could pick any point in V, Associated to P is going to be an evaluation map, which is just going to take elements of the coordinate ring, evaluate at the point. Okay, we'll mention here, a good way to think of evaluation. Okay, we did a lot of restriction to open sets to get the localization. We could think of these evaluation maps as just being restriction to points. And then this all ties up nicely when you get to sheet theory. So, we have an evaluation map. Evaluation is going to be a C algebra homomorphism. So the kernel is going to be a maximal ideal, okay? And so that's how maximal ideals get identified with points going in the direction, starting with points, going to ideals. Of course, the example we want to understand is when R is a polynomial ring in N variables. Then spec of R is just C to the N, okay? So Maximal ideals in R just going to be given in the form x1 minus p1 up through xn minus pn, where the p's are complex numbers, and we just generate the ideal. So there we see directly the correspondence between maximal ideals and points in Cn. And so that's spec R in this case. Now, if we go through our list in reverse, okay, so suppose we're starting off with coordinate ring of an affine variety. I pick M, any maximal ideal in the coordinate ring. We have our correspondence as follows. So we're going to send maximal ideals to C algebra homomorphisms. So what we'll do, okay, we're going to take our coordinate ring and just send it to the quotient by the maximal ideal. Okay, because we have a maximal ideal, this is going to be a field and it must be isomorphic to the complex numbers. Now, because it's a C algebra homomorphism in the complex numbers, Null Stolenzat says that this must be evaluation at some point in the variety. Now, it's not enough just to give okay, the space as points. We also want to mention the topology. Okay, so we also call this the Zariski topology on spec of R. We'll give the topology just by giving the closed subsets. I'll leave you to check all the details. So what we'll do, if we're given an ideal in R, we're to map it to okay, close set. And what we do is we're just going to take all the maximal ideals that I is contained in. So that's going to give us a subset of spec R. Okay, some examples. OK, 
okay, or example we saw before. So let's take polynomials of one variable. Okay, if I let the ideal be equal to zero, well, zero is contained in every maximal ideal, so I just get the entire space back. So that's just going to be all of C. If I let the ideal be equal to the entire ring, C of X, okay, well, there are no maximal ideals that contain this, so we're going to get the empty set. Okay, so that's part of what you need for the topology. Okay, the closed sets are going to include the null set and the entire space. And then we know for the topology here, the only other closed sets are going to be the finite subsets of the plane. Okay, so we could be looking at ideals which look like, say, take x minus a to the kth power. Only maximal ideal that contains this will be x minus a, and so I just get the point a by our identification here. And likewise, I could take something more complicated, so just take x minus a squared, x minus b cubed, x minus c to the fourth. Maximal ideals that contain this will be x minus a, x minus b, x minus c, and what comes out close set is a, b, c. Let's get back to affine toric varieties. Recall, we have three ways to think of affine toric varieties. First, is the space is y sub a, the Zorsky closure of the image of the map phi sub a. We have definition in terms of group actions. Finally, we have the notion of toric ideals. We now have the machinery to consider yet a fourth way using affine semigroups. Now, affine semigroup, okay, so this will be a set S. There'll be an operation on S, which is commutative, so we'll denote it by addition, and there'll be a distinguished element for the identity zero. S will be finally generated, okay, for notation, if I have a subset of S, then N times A, okay, natural numbers, is just going to be the natural number span of A. So here we're going to take all possible sums, A sub M times M, where M is in A, and then the A sub Ns are all natural numbers, all but finally many equal to zero. So this just would say that S is equal to N A for some finite A. So finitely generated. Finally, we want S to embed into a lattice M. Okay, so here what we want is that there's no torsion for our operation. Now, examples. Okay, we could take N to the N, natural numbers to the N, inside of ZN. So that's definitely an affine semigroup. If we take a finite subset inside of a lattice M, I take the span of A under the natural numbers, call that S, then that's going to be an affine semigroup. And it turns out that up to isomorphism, all affine semigroups are in this form. Now, once we have affine semigroups, I want to consider the semigroup algebra. So this is going to be a vector space over our set S. Okay, so we have C bracket S. Okay, we're just taking all possible sums. Okay, for each m inside of s, we'll have an element chi m. Think of that as being a basis element. And then we'll take all linear combinations okay, over the complex numbers. Now, multiplication. Okay, well, if I multiply two of the basis elements, all we're doing is using semigroup operation to add the indices. Okay, and of course, here we should be thinking of characters. Let's run a few examples through our process. First, if S is equal to natural numbers to the N, as an affine semigroup is generated by E1 through EN, okay, standard basis vectors. Recall these vectors give us the exponents for our characters. So if I use X instead of T, then we're going to get X1 through Xn, and that's going to generate the polynomial ring in N variables as a C algebra. If we take spec, Okay, we're going to get c to the n. Okay, note here, if we didn't make it too clear before, okay, the idea is this is your variety, this is your coordinate ring. Next, if we have s equal to z to the n, now is an affine semigroup. This is going to be generated by plus minus e1 up through plus minus en. So we're not doing subtraction in here, so we have to put in the minuses. Now, 
Okay, we take the algebra generated, then we're gonna have x1, x1 inverse, all the way up through xn, xn inverse. And if we take spec of this, well, this is the coordinate ring for c star to the n, so a torus. Now in general, okay, this is gonna be version four of affine torque variety. Okay, we have the proposition, okay, we have s affine semigroup. If we take c algebra for s, it's gonna be an integral domain, so no null potents, finitely generated as a C algebra. So this is gonna to correspond to an affine variety as its coordinate ring. If we take spec of this, it's gonna be an affine torque variety with character lattice M equal to, okay, the Z span of S. Now, if S is equal to the natural number span of A for a finite A inside of M, then spec of the algebra is just gonna be isomorphic to y sub a, okay, from before, okay? We know every affine torque variety is supposed to be isomorphic to some y sub a. A slightly more, okay, transparent way of saying this is just that the coordinate ring for y sub a is equal to the algebra for s. Let's look at some non-trivial examples. First, we have a equal to two, three in the integers. So we'll take the n span. And then if we want the coordinate ring for the corresponding y sub a, okay, all we do is we take the map phi sub a and pull off its coordinates, okay? And then take the polynomial ring generated by those. So we have c bracket t squared t cubed. Okay, if we label those x and y, then the relation is x cubed minus y squared that gives us our ideal, and then we have our cubic from before. Next, okay, again, we've seen this one before. I'll take A, okay, in matrix form, it's gonna be 100, 010, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, minus one. The coordinate ring for the corresponding Y sub A. Okay, the entries are T1, T2, T3, and T1, T2, T3 inverse. So the relation among these, okay, if we label these x, y, z, and w, is x, y minus z, w. And we've seen this example from before. Okay, so you can check, see if this matches up with the torque ideal, which it does. Finally, okay, let's take a rational normal cone, okay, here degree three. So we'll have characters three, zero, two, one, one, two, and zero, three. Okay, so here we get the corresponding characters we get our coordinate ring. If we label these x, y, z, and w, okay, corresponding ideal for the y sub a, this is as follows. So I have x, z minus y squared, x, w minus y, z, and y, w minus z squared. Of course, you should check our recipe for torque ideals to make sure that this agrees with what we would get using our previous techniques. Here's another way to think of the coordinate ring. Okay, so if T is our torus, M is its character lattice, then the coordinate ring for T is the same as the C algebra over the characters. And if I restrict T to okay, the compact torus inside of it, so we're going from the C stars to the S1s, then we're just looking at trig polynomials. That lets us bring in results from Fourier analysis. So the result we're interested in if I have W, okay, a subspace of the coordinate ring, which is invariant under the T action on functions, okay, given as so, then W can be written as a direct sum of character spaces for some indexing set. Now, if V is an affine torque variety, okay, we'll suppose T is the open torus inside of V, we reverse for the coordinate rings. So the coordinate ring of V sits inside the coordinate ring of T. Because the coordinate ring for V is invariant under the T action, we can invoke our previous result. And that means coordinate ring for V can be written as a direct sum of character spaces. The indexing set's gonna be the affine semigroup from before. So to interpret, okay, we think of V as being a partial compactification of T. So we're gonna take T and we're gonna add in more points. Now, because we add in more points, not every function on T is gonna to extend to V. And so that's what S does. S is gonna indicate 
which of these functions on t extend to v precisely.